Are speakers analogs of microphones? This question comes from Rick in Cambridge, UK. That's a heady place. Isn't that where Isaac Newton studied? I think they even have a statue of him there somewhere. Hey, Paul, you say that speakers are analogs of microphones. Yep, I do. And that they, uh, the sound they produce should reproduce the distance of the performer from the microphone and be well set behind the plane of the speakers. I think he's been listening to this show. Uh, but if, say, Miles Davis had the bell of his trumpet right up against the mic, shouldn't the sound of his trumpet be on the plane of the speakers? And if the mic is hanging over, say, Bill Evans' piano, shouldn't the piano seem to be both in front of and behind the speakers? Uh, not to mention that the recording engineer might get up, with, uh, uh, might, might get up to the balance and panning, etc., with uh, all of that uh, taken into account. Well, yes, you... You are, you hit the nail with your head. <laughs> you got it. See, them people in Cambridge are smart. Yeah, absolutely. If, if, if you start, you know, if, if Miles gets the horn of his, uh, or the bell of his, uh, of his trumpet right up against the microphone uh, on, on this system, on, on this system, any, any properly set up system, uh, it'll sound like it's coming right out of that speaker. Absolutely. It's only when we get a little distance from those analog uh, facsimiles, microphones, that we get this pushback into there. Now, for the Bill Evans question, if we're, I see where he's coming. If, if we're hanging right over the piano so that the piano kind of hangs out in the middle of the room relative to where the microphone is, shouldn't it be in front and and then behind yeah you could make an argument well I mean and and if you put the uh, microphone in back of a group would it push the group out in front and no it's it's not that accurate this is an illusion it's not the best of illusions it's as good as we can get it so it doesn't really happen that way. What I have noticed is in that illusion, what happens is that the closer we get to the microphone, the, the less distance and the less depth we have in, in to, you know, going into the back of the speaker, and it gets it right into that speaker. But put the microphone behind, and all of a sudden, again, the depth thing happens. It just sounds funny, and the guy moves further back. So anytime you have sound coming out into the room, you've got a problem. Now, a lot of people like that. A lot of people, this is, again, this whole show is my opinion, right? So get over it. Um, I, I've heard a number of systems where people, you know, point the speaker as such, or they'll put it up against the wall. They'll do whatever they can to have the sound stage appear in front of the speakers. And I suppose that works, and it still makes music, and we still can be happy about it. I, I, I'm not. I just don't like it. I, I, I always focus on having my soundstage behind the loudspeakers. One of the things we're going to do when we build our speakers uh, is give them the ability, endow them with the ability to be placed up fairly close to the wall and still have soundstage depth that goes behind outside the room and to do that without having to pull the speakers so far out into the room. Now typically when you if you go into music room two where the infinity IRS fives are, you'll see that they're pulled out the traditional classic one third the way into the room. And the sound stage appears from behind as it should. Singers, you know, we can tell the distance from the microphones. But and, and my, my mentor, Arnie Newdell, and I argued about this endlessly. I said, you know, we know technically how to put speakers closer to the rear wall, have a dial to set how far, what the distance is from the rear wall, or the front wall, whichever your perspective is, and, and actually achieve that depth. And Arnold would have nothing to do with it. Ow, F them. Well, that, you know, that they should pull, the proper way to do it is pull it out into the room, and if they don't like it, well, you know. 
And I, I can't think that way. I'm sorry. Well, Arnie and I fought like cats and dogs. You know, I'm not trying to say anything bad about Arnie. Um, I, I believe that if we have the technical chops to be able to make speakers acceptable into people's rooms, because it, it, look, it's furniture, right? It's a wooden thing sitting in the middle of the room. And in and, 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 and my listening room, fine. I got a man cave, no problem. Pulling them out, doing the thing, because it's a man cave. It's set up for listening to two-channel audio. But in my home, I also don't want speakers hanging out in the middle of the floor. I want my speakers up against the wall, and I don't want to give up sonics and performance. I want depth. It is technically possible to do it. Few companies have attempted it, and a couple of them have done okay. Uh, we plan on our speakers when they finally launch we'll have that control in the back and it'll be pretty cool and you'll you'll be able to see it and, and a lot more people will now then understand what we're talking about when we talk about soundstage depth anyway thank you for the question um, and hope you have a sunny day out there in Cambridge UK talk to you later bye